Price's Law. Ever heard of it? Half of the work in any organization is done by the square root of the number of employees. Ten employees, just three of them do half the work. One hundred employees, ten of them do. A thousand employees, just one hundred. Price's Law isn't new. It's just new to me. I came across it last week in a Jordan Peterson video. And at first glance, it sounded suspiciously like Pareto's principle, which would say that 80% of the work is done by just 20% of the employees. Pareto's principle is generally fractal, meaning that if you cube it, then you, you end up getting 50% of the work is done by just 1% of the employees. So in a 10,000 strong company, Pareto and Price would pretty much agree and say the same thing. What's really interesting is that Pareto is scale independent. In other words, the scale or the size of the field doesn't matter. 1% of your employees will do half the work, whether the company is 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000 employees, etc. Whereas price would beg to differ. He'd say that the scale matters hugely. By growing your company, most of the people you're adding are little more than useless, and the useless fraction gets bigger as the company gets bigger. At a size of four, everyone's pretty much equally productive because the square root of four is two, so two out of four people do half the work, which means the other two also do half the work. But by the time you scale up to nine, your top employees are twice as productive as the bottom ones. And at 25, they're four times as productive, and so on and so on. Price would say competence and productivity scales linearly with size whereas incompetence and uselessness scale exponentially with size. So the bigger you get, the more useless you become. From all that, it's not hard to make a few deductions, Sherlock. So here's the first one. Price's Law. And high-performing, small, creative, profitable companies that stay that way must have Karl Marx spinning in his grave. Price's Law is about as anti-socialist a concept as you can get. All people are created equal, right? Nope. Equal in value to God under the law, maybe. Equal in skill and capability and productivity in any endeavor? No chance. However, I think Herr Marx died before he saw the data. Second one. Most mid to large size companies are really just socialist states existing to keep people employed and off the streets. Is that such a bad thing? Well, no, it isn't. Who likes being on the streets? Who likes anyone else being on the streets? Better question though is, is it such a good thing? And I'd argue the same thing again. No, it isn't. It's just very mediocre and neutral. Shades of gray, and actually all those shades are the same. It's imperative for every individual to find that skill set, that environment where they can be a top performer. And this can take some time, sometimes decades, and a lot of encouragement. How do we build a society where people are encouraged and supported to search relentlessly for their golden nut, and not quit until you get there? and where companies are encouraged to compensate their people for top performance, not just for showing up. It can take some people a long time to find their place in the world. I've only known one person who knew himself so well right from high school that he had only one ambition, and he's gone and done it. And that's all he's ever done, and he's still doing it. I wasn't so fortunate or clever. It's taken me a long time, and in Indeed, I'm still not sure I'm there. But you don't do yourself or the rest of us any favors by settling for second best or worse. Steve Jobs would agree, I think. Don't settle, he said. Here's to the misfits. The little corp, the typical, I should say, corporate pay scale is very badly flawed. Top performing competence are paid a little more and sometimes the same as competent, incompetence. First really large place I ever worked in had your typical pay scale. I got a chance to do what seemed like my dream job at the time. 
It was a frying pan to fire story, as I soon discovered. I busted my butt the first year, made a few mistakes, and when salary review time came around, I got rewarded with a 2% hike, same as everyone else. Wow. Whoopee. Okay, I get it. I need to work harder. Uh, I did. I busted my butt way harder. A year later, what'd I get? 2% again! Same as everyone else. Disappointing. Hmm. The third year, I was approaching burnout, and I found it very hard to motivate myself to bust anything. So come salary, salary review time, I expected nothing, quite frankly. And what did I get? 2% again! Same as everyone else. Aha! Now I see how this game is played. But then I'd also notice that the best guys, the really good engineers in the place, were for the most part all contractors, not employees. They'd figured it out. Why does this kind of thing happen in companies? Simple. How can you compensate the top performers with top money if you don't know who they are? The decision makers probably could find out if they tried, but they're usually too busy. Or it might actually be politically inconvenient to find out. People have this annoying tendency to get really mad if they think they're one of the less equal than others. <clears throat> Go figure. Next thought. Most employees in large companies are just barely adding more value than they take away on their paycheck. Some are actually taking more. Those useless ones, those useless ones, I should say, may even sense their own uselessness. And the problem is they need the money. They got mortgages, kids. They have such little self-confidence their objective is to fool the interviewer enough to get the job then hang on to it with their back teeth until they can retire when they're old, sick, and decrepit. Wow. On the job, they go about creating unnecessary work for themselves and others to hide behind. This makes it hard for them to be identified as useless, and also hard for the top performers to be identified as well. In that same dream job firm that I mentioned, one year the division head got a new head, we got a new head honcho, who was a smooth talker. And I made a passing comment to a colleague once who muttered under his breath, and I won't forget it. He said, yeah, well, he's creating a lot of work. What was left unstated was useless work. And this approach is all subconscious, of course. And if it isn't, then they're a psychopath or sociopath or a something else path. Next thought. <clears throat> Rapid growth might mean something good. It does sometimes. You fit the mother load of growing markets. And if that's the case, great. But you'd better be darn sure that that's the case and that every new employee solves a problem that can't be solved, can't be solved any other way. And then, even then, be very slow to hire, quick to fire. If rapid growth isn't the case, then you've just been sucked into a tornado. Yeah, you're going to go up briefly, but it'll be brief. And then the tornado will become a death spiral downwards. First two companies I ever worked for both experienced this sudden rapid growth. The first one were quick to recognize that something was amiss when profits started plummeting at the same time as they were growing. Business was up all right. But it wasn't a brand new market. The growth was just cyclical. They smartly rationalized, and I was one of the useless ones they called, which was the correct call. They did themselves and me a favor, although it didn't feel like such a favor at the time. The second company <clears throat> wasn't so smart. The crash was as meteoric as the rise. But this time, I was smarter. And I started out, I'd started out useless. I quickly became quite productive. No kidding. And I cashed out my options early and left just before it really crashed. The bottom line is almost always improved in a company by layoffs of the useless ones long before the top performers ever get so fed up that they leave. 
And actually, Jordan Peterson in his video on YouTube talks about this. Once the top guys abandon the ship, it's already sinking. It's very hard to stop. And here's my last thought. The ideal scale for any creative endeavor is somewhere between four and ten people. We're in a creative economy now. Industrial revolution is over. We're now in the creation revolution. Scaling beyond four and ten, four between four and ten, that's that's the sweet spot. Scaling beyond that, you're asking for trouble. And if you're a lone ranger, Chances are good that you're going to hit pay dirt sooner or later. And you're going to want to raise your game. Yeah, fair enough. I want the same. But just remember price as well.